So there was, of course, first the question why, why dealing with refugees? First of all, we found out, no surprise, this group is getting bigger and bigger due to also to climate changes and other social and political disasters all over the world. <coughs> and um, we, I think we have the duty to deal with these groups, first of all because we have the ethic principle of fair share and people care, and secondly because our Western lifestyle creates that, that problem which uh, makes them refugees. And, um, but it's a special target group. We cannot take them as any other people coming to PDCs because they have special needs and special problems. Many of them, before they arrive in our countries, uh, have undergone traumatic experiences. At least many of them getting frustrated because they have a picture of Western lifestyle, Western world in their heads, and when they're arriving here, this picture gets some cracks and creates some frustrations. So that's maybe a good entry point to start the dialogue with them about those pictures, about their dreams, about their expectations, but also about our expectations and also about the question what we can learn from them. Because I think there's a lot to learn from the Global South, especially as we know that our lifestyle is not sustainable and will not last much longer. And um, But we have to, to be clear that um, we, we are in different positions and uh, we are all white middle class people and uh, having a European centered mindset and probably we have to get rid of that in order to to meet people, refugees from the global south on an equal level. Therefore I would suggest to organize four permaculture teachers special trainings like anti-racism training, critical whiteness, anti-discrimination, anti-bias, intercultural, whatever, um, in order to, um, well, to, to, to develop our senses for those uh, specific problems. Um, yeah, because I think it, it has a lot to do with ourselves that we are not more colored people, immigrants, in our um, Permi world. Um, then we collected some good examples, um, like the intercultural gardens. I don't know, I mean, it's a, a concept uh, widely spread already in Germany. I don't know whether there are similar things in the other countries. But then we had an example here from uh, Copenhagen by B, where uh, they provide uh, tools and skills to, um, for beekeeping and to produce honey for homeless and refugee people. And there was, well, there was a lot of examples. One example was, um, from Germany also an alternative refugee home built by development workers after, well, after there were big clashes and uh, attacks to a refugee home. These people said, we can do it in a better way and we can do it in an integrative way. And uh, where, where they organize it in a way that there are no, no um, security guards, but social workers to assist uh, the people in their needs. And um, what else? Well, <coughs> back to the intercultural gardens. It's a very good tool because there people are growing and eating together, which really integrates. And also there was this idea of eating and music um, creates also a very good atmosphere 
And, um, well, I think that's it. I mean, we, we had a lot of ideas. We collect, collected a lot of uh, different viewpoints, but it's hard to repeat all that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good.